Ferrari horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high-o silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's danger on the trail ahead! I'm Silver! Away! The ugly framework of a wooden gallows reared itself like a skeleton in the dismal prison courtyard. In the eerie half-light of pre-dawn, the figures walking toward it seemed like shadows out of a dream. It was more than a dream to a white-faced young man surrounded by official witnesses and guards was a horrible nightmare that couldn't happen. Yet, it was happening. In a few moments, he, Johnny Higgins, would step through the trap at the top of the gallows and die. Die for a murder he didn't commit. All right, Johnny. Right up the steps. Sheriff Cotter. Yes? Could... Could I say goodbye to Melissa before... I guess so, kid, but... Well, let's get this over with as soon as we can. Uh, Melissa! Melissa Barnes! Johnny. Johnny. Now, Melissa, don't take on so. You really shouldn't have come here. I had to come, Johnny. I've been praying every second that maybe something will happen. No chance of that now. Smile for me, will you, Melissa? I want to remember you that way. Of course, Johnny. I'll I'll smile. That's it. Goodbye, Melissa. Goodbye, Johnny. I'm sorry, Miss Barnes. Up the steps, kid. Yes, sir. Say, Sheriff. Yes? Ain't this hanging supposed to take place exactly at sunrise? Uh, The sun will be up any minute now. With all those rain clouds in the east, you'll never know it. How are you going to have an execution at sunrise if you don't know when the sun comes up? Ah. Now, the order of the court is that Johnny Higgins steps through that trap exactly at sunrise. I know what we'll do. Uh, go into my office, Jim, and get the almanac that's on my desk. Look in there and find out exactly when the sun is supposed to rise on this day and date. Sure, Sheriff. Right away. And, Jim. Yeah? You'd better bring the clock out with you, too. We'll make this thing legal all the way through. Sure. Uh, Johnny. Yes, sir. Just stand where you are for a minute. As soon as my deputy gets back with the clock, we'll go ahead. All right. Here you are, Sheriff. I brought the big wall clock. Now we can hang it right here on the post. I guess that'll be all right. 
Uh, did you look in the almanac? Yeah, yeah. According to that, the sun's due to rise this morning at exactly 7.59. Yeah, 7.59. And it's now... 25 minutes to late. <laughs> Got almost a half hour to wait. You hear that, Johnny? Yes, sir. I hate to drag this thing out, but Jim's right. This execution has got to be legal. According to the clock, we've got 25 minutes to wait. Only 24 and a half now. 24 and a half minutes. As Johnny Higgins stood on the gallows and listened to the clock that was ticking away his life, his mind was flooded with bitterness bitterness of a man about to die for a crime he'd not committed. His thoughts raced back through the unreal series of events that had caused all this. It began almost a month ago. One night when he and Melissa were driving home from a dance. Here we are, honey. Whoa, 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 boy. Whoa, whoa there. Come on. I'll help you down. Oh, thank you. Yeah. What is Dan the foreman? I wonder why he's up so late. Evening, Miss Melissa. Just getting home from the dance? Yes, Sam. You know Johnny Higgins, don't you? Yeah. Hiya, kid. Hello, Sam. Hey, that sure is a pretty dress you're wearing, Miss Melissa. Red's my favorite color. Why, thank you, Sam. But this dress isn't red. It's green. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see it now. Must be the way the lamplight shines on it. Sam, is Uncle Charlie still up? The light's burning in the living room. He's up all right. Johnny wants to talk to him. Yeah, this is a bad night to talk to him. He ain't in a very good mood. What's wrong? Some of the ranchers from out in the valley were here tonight talking to him. Les Pruitt, Frank Mallon, and Cal Smith. The argument got kind of hot. Those men are always arguing with Uncle Charlie. Even though he loans them money every year to get their crops in. I guess they figure your uncle's interest rates are a little too high. They should be thankful he loans them the money. All that hasn't anything to do with my business with your uncle. I think I'll bust right in there now. You're taking a chance, kid. The old man's really boiling. Go on, Johnny. I'll wait for you. Sure. <laughs> Give me a kiss for luck. Johnny glanced down at the clock. Three and a half minutes had passed. There were only 23 left. He remembered distinctly the talk he'd had with Melissa's Uncle Charlie. Of course you can't marry Melissa. You don't have a steady job. I know prospect of one. Melissa and I are in love, Mr. Barnes. That's beside the point. We don't think so. Well, I do. And I'll never allow my niece to marry a man like you. Nothing but a no-good cow puncher who can't hold a steady job. Yes, I can. I suppose you want to marry Melissa because you think she'll inherit my money. I've never even thought of that. Oh, yes, you have. Every saddle tramp in the territory has got the same idea. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Barnes. You're wasting your time. Now get out of here. Get out of my house. All right, I'll get out. But I'll be back and see you again. I'll keep on coming back. No, you won't. Because I won't allow it. And I forbid you to see Melissa. Mr. Bond. You get out. I haven't changed my mind. I'll be back. The steadily ticking clock seemed the loudest thing Johnny Higgins had ever heard. He saw that two more minutes had gone by. That meant only 21 more to live. Now in the half-light, he could see the faces of the witnesses. Les Pruitt, Cal Smith, Frank Mallon, Sam Ketch, the foreman of the Barnes Ranch. He remembered driving home that night. How angry and confused he was. That must have been why he lost one of his cufflinks when he unhitched the horse. He'd gone to his room and went to bed. The next morning, he awoke to hear a loud knock on the door. Johnny! Johnny! Wait a minute. I put something on. (laughs) Melissa, what are you... Johnny, you you didn't do it, did you? Do what? Did you come back to the ranch last night? No. I came home and went to bed. Why? Uncle Charlie was killed last night. Murdered. Murdered? You couldn't have done it. Of course I didn't kill your uncle. Well, I felt like doing it. Sam Ketch has told the sheriff that you had an argument with Uncle Charlie. What of it? So did Pruitt and Mallon and Smith. That's not the worst part. It must have happened after I'd gone to sleep. The living room was all torn up. Uncle Charlie was stabbed to death. Oh, you poor kid. But what's that got to do with me? The sheriff only found one clue to the killer. It was a cuff link. Just like yours, Johnny. 
cufflink. Say, that reminds me, I, I lost one of mine last night. Where? I, I don't know. Johnny, please tell me you didn't do it. I swear I didn't, Melissa. I didn't kill your uncle. I believe you. But I'm afraid no one else will. And Sheriff Cotter's... What? He's on his way here now to arrest you. Gee, looks kind of like... You've got to leave, Johnny. Get away from here and stay away until they find out who really killed Uncle Charlie. But I'm innocent, Melissa. You can't prove it. You just said you couldn't. Oh, please, Johnny, for my sake, leave. My pony's outside. You can ride him. Well, uh... Please. All right, Melissa, I'll go. Three more precious minutes ticked away into eternity. Johnny felt the perspiration oozing out all over his face, just as it had that morning when he'd ridden wildly into the mountains on Melissa's pony. He knew a posse was trailing him, but there was nothing to do but go on. Come on, pony, just a little further. Then suddenly he rendered round at a bend in the trail near the river. He was in the midst of a small campsite. He saw three figures crouching around a fire. One was tall, lean, and wore a black mask. His companions were a young boy and an Indian. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, brother. Oh. You seem to be in a hurry, racing that pony on an uphill trail. Masked an outlaw. We're not outlaws. Guess I'm in the right company anyway. My horse is winded. I can't go any further. Well, what's the trouble? There's a posse trailing me. Was that right? Lynch mob would be a better name for it. I'll swing if they catch me. What's the reason? Murder. That's dangerous business. But I didn't do it. Honest, I didn't. I've never killed anybody. Doesn't the law know that? Everything's against me. Well, I mean, it looks that way. Why should I want to kill the uncle of the girl I'm in love with? Kimasabi, me here plenty horses. Come fast. The, the posse, they'll get me and I won't have a chance to get away. You don't look like a murderer. Tell me about it. I might be able to help you. All right. My name's Johnny Higgins. Last night I took my girl, Melissa Barnes, to... Why had he told the masked man about it? Even now he didn't know. It certainly hadn't helped any. In fact, telling the story had caused him to be captured. He remembered all those questions the masked man had asked. You say you lost a cufflink and one was found at the scene of the murder. That's what Melissa told me. But it couldn't have been mine. Why not? Because she said the link that Sheriff Carter found had a ruby in it. Mine was set with an imitation emerald. I see. Are you sure you've told me everything that happened and all that was said from the time you arrived at the Barnes Ranch until you left? Yes. That's the posse. They'll get there. Uh, what do we do? Get the horses. We'll have to move fast. Sure. Here, Victor. Silver, scout. I'll have to ride double with one of them. My pony's winning. No, Johnny. You're not going with us, Teddy Silver. Uh, uh, what? You mean you're going to double cross me? Leave me here for that lynch crazy posse? There's to... no danger of you being lynched. I know Sheriff Cotter and the law in this part of the country. You'll get a fair trial by a jury. I thought you were going to help me. I am. Listen to me, Johnny. Yeah? I believe you're innocent. I think you've been framed. But I don't know exactly how it was done. They'll jail me. That they won't hurt you. And I promise you that no matter how long it takes, I'll do everything possible to prove your innocence. The boy here with me is named Dan Reed. You'll hear from me through him. I know it may be hard, Johnny, but keep up your nerve. Come on, Silver. All right, Victor. Get him out. Come on, Silver. Silver. Away. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. The sky in the east was brighter now. The measured ticks of the clock were like hammer blows in Johnny Higgins' brain. He remembered his capture by Sheriff Cotter's posse. He hadn't tried to... What was the use? His one chance of escape had been the mask man and his friends. When they rode away, Johnny gave up. He'd been taken to jail. He stayed there for a week, then was indicted for murder. A few days later, he came to trial. Order! Order in the court! Prosecution may continue. And Johnny Higgins, you don't deny that on the night in question you had an argument with Mr. Barnes. We had a few words. And you threatened to come back and kill him. Well, no, I just said I'd be back, that's all. In the light of what happened, that was enough. Now, tell me something. I hold in my hand a small gold cufflink set with a precious stone. Have you ever seen it before? No. You deny its ownership? Well, I had a pair of cufflinks, something like that, but the stone was different. This link was dropped by the man who murdered Charles Barnes, and you admit that you own one, something like it. That'll be all. I'd like to call Sam Ketch to the stand. Sam Ketch? Sam Ketch. Yes. Sir, I tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, I'll help you? Yep. Sam, you've been the foreman on the Barnes Ranch for a number of years. Tell us in your own words exactly what happened the night Mr. Barnes was murdered. Well, well, I talked to Miss Melissa and Johnny Higgins when they come home from the dance. Young Higgins was real mad and riled up at poor old Mr. Barnes. Heard him talking in the living room. But why should he live through all that trial again? From the very first, he never had a chance and he knew it. No, Johnny hadn't been surprised at the jury's verdict of guilty. Clear daylight now. The sun had just topped a ridge of the Buckhorn Mountain Range. Johnny knew it was the last time he would see it rise. He stole a quick glance at the clock. Eleven minutes more. Eleven minutes till death. Do people who are about to die see their whole life flash before them? Perhaps that was the reason he could remember so vividly the first time Dan Reed had visited him in prison. Good to see you, Johnny. Oh, thanks. Let me know when you're through talking. Hello, Johnny. Remember me? You were with the man who wore a mask. The one who turned me over to the posse. My name's Dan Reed. The three of us you met that day are working hard to prove that you're not guilty. That's no help to me. I'm gonna be hung. Oh, I know. But there's still four days left. Good's four days. Well, Tonto and I have been here in town ever since your trial. We've been tracing and checking every person who was anywhere near the Barnes Ranch that night. Three ranchers from the valley were there. None of them liked Mr. Barnes any more than I did. But that doesn't mean they killed him. I know. So does the man who promised to help you. Promised? What does that mean when I'm going to die? I'm going to die, I tell you. Oh, I don't blame you for being scared. I'd probably be so scared I couldn't talk, but... But I know this is the truth. The man who gave you his promise has never broken a trust in his life. Goodbye, Johnny. I'll be back again tomorrow, the next day. Another minute and a half gone. That left only nine minutes and 30 seconds. Johnny looked at the faces of the men below him. He noticed that Melissa's head was bowed. She was crying softly. That's the way she'd been when they talked in the cell yesterday. <laughs> don't, don't, Melissa, please don't. I, I can't help it, Johnny. Maybe something will happen. It's almost a full day and a night left. I, I told you about Dan Reed being here a couple of days ago. What can he do? I don't know, but he says this masked friend of his can do anything. Isn't that the man who deserted you up in the mountains when you were trying to get away from Sheriff Carter? Yeah. And he won't help? I can't tell. Maybe he will. Just saying that to make me feel better. Yeah, guess I am. We're really all alone, Melissa. There's nothing either of us can do. (laughs) 
Eight minutes. Eight swiftly racing minutes were all that remained between Johnny Higgins and death. The sky was brighter now. He could see the nervous movements of the witnesses below him. They shifted uneasily from one foot to the other and looked at the clock as often as he did. Johnny knew them all. Les Pruitt, Frank Mellon, Cal Smith, and Sam Ketch. Any one or all of them could have killed Charles Barnes. But what Johnny didn't know was that during the last four weeks, Dan Reed and Tonto had trailed each of these men, checked their habits and movements. Who's that, Dan? It's Les Pruitt. He owns a ranch night right next to the Barnes place. Oh, him big fella, huh? Him talk loud. Yeah. Maybe that's why the Lone Ranger was so sure we'd find him here in the cafe. Oh. He's gonna set in on that poker game, Tonto. Come on, we can move closer. Throw your cards, gents. How many do you want, Pruitt? Uh, give me one. Just one. There you are. All right, who open pot? Somebody start betting. Oh, not me. I'm out. What's the matter, Pruitt? Yeah, I made a one card draw to a flush and missed. It's the right color, but the wrong suit. <laughs> That's tough. Did you hear Did you see that, Tonto? Uh, it's one thing the Lone Ranger will be interested in. How about other three men? Yeah, Frank Mellon, Cal Smith, and Sam Ketch. And they're here in town someplace. During the next two or three days, we'll just have to keep our eyes open, that's all. This water hole by main trail. It's a good place to wait. Yeah. Almost anyone heading for the other end of the valley will stop here to water his horse. Ah. Oh, me here, horse now. Somebody come now. Sure. Tonto. Uh huh. Look. It's Frank Mellon. Ah, another man, Cal Smith. Yeah, you're right. Come on, we'll stay out of sight. Oh, oh, you pray there. Oh, oh, oh. Sure don't have any trouble getting a horse to stop here. Critters can smell this water a mile away. Yeah, sure can. Drink up there, boys. <laughs> Say, Cal, didn't Sheriff Carter ask you to be one of the witnesses at the hanging tomorrow morning? Yeah. He asked you too, didn't he? Yeah. You know, that's a job I don't have much hankering for. Watching the kid get his neck broke ain't my idea of fun. Me neither. But the sheriff says being an official witness is a public duty, kind of like serving on a jury. Mm, maybe so. Guess Higgins' boy is guilty, all right. He is convicted. You know, Frank, either Pruitt or you or me had the same chance that kid did to kill Barnes. The court proved him guilty. That's good enough for me. Hey, you crazy critter, stop that! <laughs> Ah, uh, this logo a horse of mine starts nibbling on a shumac bush. It's poison. You'd think he'd be able to see those greenish berries a mile away. <laughs> well, maybe the horse ain't got as sharp eye as you do, Frank. Uh, well, come on, let's get moving. Yeah, get up, you get crazy guy. Get up there. Get... Them men tell anything? I don't know, Toto. That's for the Lone Ranger to decide. Our next job is to trail Sam Kidd. <laughs> We go in here. Sam Ketch just sat down and ordered something to eat. Come on, we'll follow him. Here's your order, Ketch. Roast lamb. Good. I'm really hungry. You gonna drink coffee? Yep. Coming right up. Hey, wait a minute. What's wrong? You're supposed to serve mint sauce with this meat, not cranberry. That's mint sauce. Ain't either. Don't even have to taste it. I can tell by the color. What are you trying to do? Fool somebody around here? Mint sauce is green. Cranberries. Well, I guess we've checked everything, Tom. Uh, now we go to camp. Tell Lone Ranger. Sure. Come on. Of course, Johnny Hickens had no way of knowing what Dan Reed and Tonto had done, or what the Lone Ranger had made of the information they'd given him. Johnny's attention was riveted on the clock. Only one minute of life remained. Sixty more seconds and... Time's almost up, Sheriff. Yes, you'd better go up there and fix the noose, Jim. Yeah. Hate to do this, kid. Now, wait a minute, Jim. Oh, Victor, oh, boy. Oh, there, oh. Sheriff Carter? They're right here. What is it? Yeah, I hope I'm not too late. Here's a note. Yeah, give it to me. 
Something from the governor, Sheriff? Uh, no, it's not from the governor. Oh, let's get on with the hanging. Uh, not yet. A good friend of mine, the man who wrote this note, has suggested something. Well, what do you mean? He sent a small piece of colored pasteboard with this note. Here, I want all of you men to look at it. Go on, examine it. Well, there ain't no sense to this, Sheriff. Why? Holding up a legal hanging while the witnesses look at a piece of green pasteboard. Huh? Say that again, Sam. I say this little hunk of green pasteboard ain't I got nothing I thought I heard to... you right. You're under arrest, Sam. And don't go for your gun. I've got you covered. Me? What you arresting me for? Murder. I'm arresting the man who really murdered Charlie Barnes. But I... You can't prove a thing on yes, me. Yes, I can. You just proved it by yourself. That little piece of cardboard in your hand catches red, not green. What the... Bring the prisoner down, Jim. There won't be any hanging this morning. Tony, how did it all happen? Dan Reed told me some of it, but not all. What did he say? Remember when Sam Ketch remarked about your dress the night your uncle was killed? Yes. That's the first thing that made the Lone Ranger suspicious. But how I guess he... Sam Ketch had been figuring on killing your uncle for a long time. It was a grudge he'd had for years. And he decided to frame me. How? Well, that was easy. I was always arguing with Mr. Barnes about you and me getting married. Ketch even went so far as to buy a pair of cufflinks just like mine. And leave one of them on the floor of your living room. That wasn't your cufflink. It didn't look like mine. All except the setting. That was red instead of green. Well, how did that prove anything? That's the part I don't understand, Melissa. All I know is the Lone Ranger is the only one who figured out that Sam Ketch and the murderer were both colorblind. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.